Hello friends, good morning and this is a chilly morning here in the uh, north part of India and uh, it's almost like 6 degrees here, it's quite cold but let me invite my friend from UK, Mr. Nathan Gordy. Good morning CK, well it's chilly here too, so uh, join, the, join each other, although I don't seem to be having the overcoat that you've got on. Oh yeah, because uh, you get heating uh, in the UK, so uh, you are well, you, you have a cozy environment. Uh, whereas uh, we have uh, winters only for a couple of months, so we don't really, we just wear more clothes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So let's talk about the chilly environment. No, let's not talk about the chilly environment. Let's talk about something progressive. Something that's changing in your world which recognise, although it's taken some time to change, it recognises change, recognises things need to change. Certainly, uh, Neville, so there has been uh, a lot of activities uh, at the country level. And uh, as you know, just to give you a little background, India is a federal country. That means different states, which are uh, ruled by state governments, and uh, the state governments are also elected by uh, the people, local people, by direct vote transfer. So, if I want to uh, select a government, I have to per personally vote in my name directly to a, a member of legislative assembly. So, we call them MLAs. They are pretty much like MPs, member of parliament, but they rule the state. And from each state, there are MPs which are selected and they go to the parliament. The idea being that uh, the people who are elected by uh, normal citizens, will carry their issues forward and discuss it out and basically become a lawmaker. What works for us, what we need, what are our requirements, those are represented in the uh, assemblies at the state level and in the parliament at the country level. So uh, in India, there has been election uh, right from grassroots, right from villages uh, to housing societies and then townships and state. So uh, everything is very uh, politically charged up in India because there are no absolute powers. There are no power for life. All of these positions starting from the village head to the uh, uh, prime minister are elected for a short duration. Now, having said that, uh, there are federal structure also. So all these different state governments are part of India. They follow the Indian law, which is unified law. Uh, India is a secular country and uh, it allows all types of people to coexist uh, having different languages, different religion. And that is a very good uh, powerful system that allows countries to join India or leave if they want to. So it's a completely federal structure. It gives a lot of freedom, political freedom. And uh, as under this system, uh, there are set number of people, representative goes to the parliament. And when the India got independence uh, uh, from UK in 1947, the ratio was, you know, the, depending on uh, how many people were there at that point in time. And the uh, the figure was 530 and odd uh, member of parliament in the lower house and about 230 in the upper house. Uh, the uh, role for lower house is to run the government and the role for upper house is to govern the parliament and the lower house. So basically they, uh, they are the uh, uh, house of elders who will watch what is going on uh, and nothing is going wrong, uh, wrong in India. So that was the way the parliament in India operate. And uh, even after independence, a lot of uh, different states uh, or different countries who were independent earlier joined Indian uh, uh, ecosystem. And the last uh, uh, a country to join was a state, a small country up north, uh, bordering China, next to Bhutan, called Sikkim. In 1973, it joined India, became 29th state of India. So we are 29 different government under the umbrella of uh, the Indian government. Now, having said that, this is just a background for people to understand, for some of your friends to understand also. Uh, the population of uh, India has almost become two and a half times after independence. We are now 1.3, uh, 1.3 and plus people and uh, elections are going on. The ratio of member of parliament versus the people of India is nearly 3 million now. 
and uh, that means 3 million people are sending one mp to the parliament and that is a huge number we were finding it difficult to represent everyone in the parliament because uh, there is limited sp space in the building and parliament is an institution by itself it comes along with a lot of other uh, facilities and uh, the government working etc so it is a it's a very huge structure especially for a country like india it has parliament building it has uh, security services it has annex which provides the uh, translation because there are people from different part of india do not understand language so there are automated translators uh, bookkeeping record uh, uh, storing and all that so it's a, it's a huge structure uh, for the indian parliament and there was a need to expand it one to represent indian people better and also to allow new federations to come and join indian subcontinent so finally we got uh, uh, approval uh, government of india has given two years time to construct a new building which is almost like two and a half times uh, bigger than the previous one and uh, this will have facility to have nearly 1200 plus member of parliament uh, so that means uh, currently we have about 700 and odd but the growth is uh, almost like 300 uh, to 400 extra member of parliament approaching and working together into the parliament so i think that is a very big uh, uh, update especially for this part of the world where india being a democratic uh, country right from grassroots to the uh, level of the country and also a federal country that means each state can come and join and follow the indian laws and rule of law so and at the same time maintain their identity language religion uh, and so on and freedom to live freedom of liberty and uh, different kinds of rights so i think this is something which i wanted to update you today and wanted to take your opinion also because uh, you know you are joining us from uk and the name of the program is uh, uh, naval good life want to really understand your uh, perspective on this one well it's a fascinating change isn't it we do know that governments take years and years and years to change one thing that we know um it, it's a it's a fact of life that governments move much much slower than a business moves. However, what we need to applaud is the fact that change is happening. No, no matter where it's come from, and this presumably is from a pressure of the people, be more democratic. We want to be better represented at the center because we are a much bigger nation than we were when this was set up. My guess is, you know, listening to the numbers that you have there it's very similar setup to the uk houses of parliament house of lords and the house of commons um which isn't too surprising really because that's how india came into pass in 1947 um and the good thing is you're you're now moving forward so it's an evolution people are growing up but let's look at let's look a little bit more at um, what's physically happened. So can, can, uh, let me ask you a few questions, and, it, and it's really around why this has happened. So I'm making a few assumptions here, but let's make sure those assumptions are facts. The the population is much bigger today than it was in 1947. I mean, th that is a fact. So is the government recognizing that it needs to be more representative of this growing population and the growing differences around, you say India is now 29 states. That's a, that's a huge number of states, really. I mean, you're getting all, over half of the states in America, for instance. So it's a huge number of states. And all of those have got differing requirements i mean in the uk we have the north and the south the north very industrial the south more service oriented and in india i know there's a huge difference between the east coast and the west coast and certainly the industrious arena of the north and certainly the northwest part of, of india than the northeast so is it then 
that this is just clearly to become more democratic? So simple question. It's so funny, uh, Devil, you said the government don't take, uh, I mean, they take a lot of time to change. Uh, so Indian government is no different. Uh, it is uh, similar to uh, any other government. They have taken a lot of time. This need of expansion of parliament was recognized officially in the parliament itself about 30 years back. Wow. And uh, finally, the Modi government had guts to move the, the whole thing because it's going to be a, um, a you know a, a more than a billion dollar project because you're shifting your parliament you are ensuring that the functioning of the government is not hampered you're also ensuring that the advanced systems with security with the latest gadgetry is also installed in the new parliament uh, it is going to be completely paperless so i think uh, government of india if you look at uh, whichever you know party is ruling the indian government they have taken a lot of time you know, we should have expanded in the last uh, century itself because uh, population has been growing. But I think this government has uh, shown the guts to take drastic measures and they have given just two years time to build the new building. It will be ready by 2022 and we'll be having a new parliament in 23. Well, it's great. You say, you know, they've taken the guts. So it's been 20 years, at least 20 years in the making. We're being generous now, okay? And they've taken the guts in the last sort of two years because Modi's only been around really um, for just over about 18 months or so. So um, it's this word guts I want to focus on <laughs> because and I'd now like to talk a little bit about business because it's having the guts to do something different. I don't want to talk about political differences here because now we're, now we're just going to flip into the business world. What does it mean for you? Have you got the guts to change? If you've, if you've not been listening over the last seven or eight months, you haven't heard of this word COVID. Now, I don't know where you've been if you haven't heard of this word COVID, okay? But wherever you've been, you've been very fortunate because you haven't heard about it, okay? The likelihood is that's one in a trillion chance of you not hearing about it. So you have heard about it, but what have you done about it? We've seen schools, the archetypal networking arena, where you have to go to school to learn. They've gone digital. Kids no longer literally go out of the front of the house, take that short visit to school, create this pandemonium of traffic around school time. <laughs> And all of a sudden, the traffic dies down when every kid gets into school. Now, they get out of bed, they have their breakfast, they get washed, and they go online. That is a massive change for anybody. But have you experienced it in your business? Have you gone online? Have you become the digital whiz? Have you created social media platforms that you need to do to meet the requirements of your audience because by the way your audience is no longer traping up and down the street in in the western world we've seen massive bricks and mortar retailers collapse not because of amazon i mean lots of people have been blaming amazon you know the click and collect the click and deliver it's because covid has accelerated what was happening before people's behavior is changing and this is the thing we should be talking about today so indians behavior is changing they've been crying out for we want to be more democratic we want more leaders at the center we want more people that can represent what we want to be doing in our area i'm not interested in what's going on in the north because i live in the south you know we are a completely different business community in the south than the north and that's what the government has changed. And now what you need to be doing is thinking about your business. How have your customers changed? Have they changed? Do you even know who your customers are? Have you canvassed them? You know, have you gone and asked them, do they like your product or service? Could they recommend you to somebody else? And again, all of this can be done digitally. 
No, you don't need to be physically in front of everybody anymore. So if we can take this leap of faith, the government has taken, has had the guts. You use the word guts, so we're going to focus on the word guts. I'm going to ask you a question now, and this is never rehearsed, as you well know. Um, have you had guts to change your business? Uh, yes, I think uh, we have the guts and uh, I'm uh, changing my company. Uh, it is not 100% perfect, but you know, we have recognized in fact, you uh, raised a very important uh, question. In fact, the, the customer profile has also changed for us. We are now finding customers, uh, uh, different types of customers, because before the pandemic, we were focused on the SME or, uh, and uh, startups uh, and also the corporate uh, uh, clients. But now we are focused on individuals because I think those are the people who need our help more than the companies. And the companies are, uh, like us who are an SME also needs to change. And, you know, I will end my, uh, uh, you know, my point by just stating one more point related to the, to the government of India specifically. When the Indian uh, uh, became a India as a country, Indian subcontinent, there were nearly 600 Maharajas. And the uh, UK government said, hey, when we came to this part of the world, we got these Maharajas. And when we're leaving, we want to have a justification uh, and we want to don't want to gobble up their uh, properties and their statehoods. So when the British left, they were the India as a country, which was mostly unnamed, uh, unmanned land. And within this country, there were 630 Prince states, which were later unified. And that was a job done by the Indian themselves to unify the entire uh, uh, entire region into one uh, one government. However, the dynastic culture did not die out. I mean, you can remove the dynasties, but dynastic culture uh, has taken some time to <laughs> to uh, you know to eradicate. And uh, what was happening is uh, some of these managers uh, joined politics, and uh, they used to get lavish uh, properties to live on, just like you have uh, uh, the prime minister's house in UK, which is. Uh, a building and you come and go. I mean, you acquire that building and then you, once the tenure is over, you go. But here also the ruling was the same, but on the garb of creating a monument uh, for a big man, that building was confiscated and it was created a, a, like a, a museum for, uh, for the memories. So this was going on. Whoever basically becomes uh, somebody in this country had a monument for him. And I think that also is a big change along with the parliament. There is going to be a prime minister house. There is going to be a vice president house. There is going to be a president house and they will be the property of the state. Nobody will be able to confiscate that. So I think it's a very big change, which we are going to see in the political system. It is, it is a big change, uh, but uh, I'm going to go back to this word guts. Um, your current, I mean, <laughs> Now is not the time to be spending money on government buildings. The criticism will be immense. You know, it should be spending money on what's going to be best for the community. But the interesting thing is, this should be best for the community because it's allowing governance to happen easier. And if that message is getting over, then that's great. But let's come back to the business side. You know, congratulations on firstly, recognizing your demographic has changed. There are so many businesses out there that don't even know what the demographic is. You know, you, you, I see it on a regular basis. I'm not talking about one man band businesses now. I'm talking about quite sizable businesses that have, that they hear about what's your demographic, who's your ideal customer, what's your break even point. We need to go back to some basics, some brass tacks. What makes our organization be successful? What have we got to do to make the change? And if you're a startup, you know, a small organization, you have a real opportunity here to ask all those questions before you get into difficulty. But even for the small business, Ask your own employees, ask your partners, 
have a brainstorming session, which isn't about blame culture, you know, because frankly, I've got more things wrong than I've got right in my career. So if I was just to beat myself up for everything I've got wrong, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I'd be miserable, you know, sat down watching morning TV and not actually progressing. But that isn't life. You want to be getting forward. You want to be enjoying yourself and having fun. And at the end of the day, business should be fun because that's what drives an entrepreneur. And this is where a great opportunity now. I mean, we're coming up to the Christmas period in the UK. Um, we're in tier three lockdown, which you probably have no idea what that means. Frankly, there's so much confusion over here. I'm not so, so sure many people really do know what that means. But we are, we're on the 16th of December and typically businesses have shut down for Christmas. It's the festive season. There are office parties, typically. Uh, it's a celebration of the year. Um, all those things have sort of gone by the by. The only real activity that's going on is the big service industries, the banks and retail. That tends to make Christmas happen. Kids are about to come away from school in the next three or four days. And then there's this two week shutdown. That's what happens in the Western world, certainly in the UK. Um, and I know for a fact that many Indians actually do take a shutdown over the same period as well. You know, coming out of Diwali, it's now time to look at the future. You know, it's the festival of lights, the, you know, new creation, the new world. Hanukkah follows a few days later. And that is, again, that's a festival of lights. And even in Sweden, they have an equivalent festival of lights. So it's a new birth time for everybody. We're coming up to the new year here, and that's a new birth too. So now's the time to have a really good look at your business. Get yourself in a position for the new year. 2021 is only 15 days away. 15 days, one five. Fortunately, it's double, double digits. So you've got a few days to think about it. But go and look at your digital profile. Go and look at what people are saying, how they're communicating with your competitors. Look at the really big competitors that you dream to be in their pocket. So whatever business you're in, there will be a big competitor. It doesn't matter whether you're in management consultancy like we are, where we've got Accenture, we've got McKinsey, they're all there. I can see what they're doing. Do I want to follow them? Do I want to repeat what they're doing? Are they making inroads? Ask all those questions because change will happen. That's the issue, you know, and you've got to have the guts to get ahead of the game. So this all started with discussion about, you know, new government building, new government democracy for India but you can actually flip this into your own business and take this as an opportunity to look at yourself. Neville, I think your points are very, very relevant and very uh, important. I think uh, what I've been, I've been noticing in the uh, field is that uh, while people realize that they have to change, they have to find new marketplaces, uh, they no longer thrive on what they've done for the last 20 years. It's like rebuilding yourself yet uh, again. So it is uh, at that juncture we are, the entire humanity is, and many people don't know how to do branding for themselves. So would you have the last say on this subject? Because I think that is becoming uh, very important. You mentioned you have competition. So now the competition is online. You mentioned that you have to have your uh, unique selling point so that people have to, you know, come up with some uniqueness in them to sell themselves on digital platform. And for that, branding is very important. Would you like to throw some points on this? Certainly. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, I mean, brand is such a big issue, as you well know. Um, we're just going to talk about the, the, the one-man bands, the very, very small businesses. When you start the business, the first thing you tend to go and do is create a website. You also create a logo. You get business cards. Now, there's a reason for that because it's your brand. 
More importantly, it's your personal brand because people buy from people. I mean, we've said it many, many times in our conversations, CK. You know, we, we've even had CEO round tables on the, on the discussion. People buy from people. And when you're starting up, your brand is you. So at the very, very simple point, whenever anyone sees your logo or your website, they're actually seeing you. You haven't got a thousand people in your team. Eventually, I hope you do have a thousand people in your team. But on day one, your brand is you. So this is where you need to be smart. Well, how do you want to see, how would you like to see yourself? Have a look in the mirror. You know, you smile a, a tremendous amount on videos and people can see that. I don't smile as much as you do. But boy, when I really smile, you can't stop me. It's a guffaw. It's hilarious. But do I portray that? Is that my persona? And the other thing is, if you don't like what you see, change it. Because you can. Your DNA is not written in stone. When you were born, you were born with a brain that is incredibly flexible. It's the biggest PC you will ever know. And your experiences are the software that goes into it. And as you improve your experiences, good or bad, I mean, you, you need to reflect on yourself. So the key thing is branding is absolutely critical to your success. In the first instance, it's personal branding that is going to count. So who are you? Have a good look in the mirror and start there. And then uh, the next thing is move very quickly. Get into the digital space. You're going to make mistakes. Don't worry about it, but just get out there. Go onto LinkedIn, create a profile, send it to your best friends and say, do you think that's me? And if they are your best friends, they'll give you a really good laugh and they'll say, you're joking, you know, you, <laughs> when, when did you do that? How did you do this? You know, and you can have a bit of fun building up that profile because that is the brand. We, we, we forget about we forget about where brands start um, in your passport to grow, which is a sort of subsidiary as mine fit. We talk about the brand of me. B-O-M, not B-U-M, by the way, B-O-M, the brand of me. <laughs> and it is who am I? How do people see me? Do they believe me? Really tough questions, actually. Even tough questions for an SME that's been around for five or six years. But if you start off, you know, you ask the question, you know, how important is the brand? Where's the brand come from? Well, it starts inside. It's like happiness. Happiness is driven by you, not by anybody else. The environment can make you feel happy but only if you're prepared to listen. And the other thing, by the way, while we're on this subject of happiness, um, it takes fewer muscles to smile than it does to frown. So typically, as humans are very lazy, you know, smile a lot because you're not using as much, <laughs> as many muscles. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, coming back to the subject of branding, branding starts with you as the individual. You need to be focused on who you are, why you are, what people see. And you won't get it right all the time. But the more you practice, the better you'll become. Neville, I think uh, this is a very good uh, input that you've given. And uh, people who are watching this program, and if they need any help, uh, they want to take advice from Neville, they can reach out to us or direct you to him. We'll make the connection happen. And they can learn the rules of uh, doing branding and grow, similar to what the Indian government has done with, uh, you know, erecting new buildings and new infrastructure to govern better. So thank you very much, Neville, for finding time this morning to talk to us. And uh, we will catch up in uh, some other edition of uh, Neville Good Live probably next week.
It's been a pleasure, CK, as ever. And if anyone wants to know about branding, just look at what's going on on your screen behind you. <laughs> <laughs> because there are brands galore. And, and we don't even notice what's being shown. So just be smart. Go and have fun. Go and practice. Because the right practice makes perfect. Thank you, Neville. Bye-bye for today. We will catch you next time. Cheerio.